Good morning, brothers and sisters. I hope you're doing well. I want to talk to you today a little bit about bargaining and some about the Joint Protective Boards that we're uh, in the process of forming throughout the Brotherhood. Uh, with regard to bargaining, of course, you know, if you followed uh, our website and, and, and stuff we've posted as information, you know that we served notices last year. Uh, we have been having scheduled conferences, uh, not in person, uh, remotely because of COVID and, and the restrictions to, to meet in person. Uh, we've uh, also invoked mediation that started yesterday, but between uh, November and yesterday, we had several conferences where both parties uh, expressed their desire and concerns and uh, in moving forward, of course, uh, the railroads are offering zero for wages. Uh, they want more concessions in health care and they want work rule concessions, uh, which all of we, we have no interest in in doing and and actually uh, the reason we invoke mediation there's there's no basis for settlement under what what we view as uh, what's been put forth on the table and and we'll see how that goes the mediator is uh, uh is not scheduled any future conferences uh, uh, those have been restricted to video conferences as well uh, i hope that soon we can uh, can get to in-person uh, bargaining uh, but uh, for the time being, there's no headway made on bargaining and uh, uh, we're proceeding along as though uh, we hope to, to find a solution with the National Mediation Board. So uh, that's, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, not a lot of news, but uh, we are progressing uh, along uh, normally with the bargaining process. With regard to the to new Joint Protective Boards that we're forming, uh, it's uh it's been long overdue and, and to kind of lay out the reasoning and and, and where we're at is I, i'm going to just briefly go through my experience on the railroad i i won't bore you with too much but i can tell you uh, when i started on the railroad in 1974 uh, i started with the lnn railroad which is part of csx that had uh, that now consists of about 13 railroads but during my tenure working career on the railroad uh, as a track repairman, uh, machine operator, and and section foreman, uh, I can tell you in my interactions with the other crafts and and folks on the railroad, uh, many of you may not know what a work train is, or or a clerk, or a telephone operator, or well, you know what a signal maintainer is because they're still there, but. For the most part, clerks and telephone operators are gone, and I don't know that we even have work trains anymore that work on a local basis. But uh, in my engagement with all those crafts in my tenure on the railroad, uh, every member of all those unions that I ever interacted with thought that we should have one single union that represented uh, railroad workers and uh, and fighting for all rail wor railroad workers, not just one single craft. And I can tell you that was my belief then, uh, and it's still my belief today. Uh, along with that, we had, uh, we have, for the last 30 years or so, uh, we've had mergers, acquisitions, uh, just putting together uh, of what was probably 100 or more railroads in the 60s and 70s to get them down to, uh, seven class ones in the United States now and, and four very large class ones that control rail freight in this country. During that process on my railroad, uh, which was the LNN, we, the, the, it, it went from the LNN railroad to the seaboard coastline, which put the LNN together with the Atlantic coastline and the seaboard coastline. Uh, the seaboard coastline and, and Atlantic coastline was put together in 1968, uh, just to give you an example of how long those members have been working together on the same railroad, passing one another on the highway, going to different local lodge meetings uh, through that 30 or 40 years because they were in two different federations. Um, in, in the late 90s, we were fortunate enough to, to bargain with, well, at that time, CSX had formed and purchased the BNO, the CNO, the BNO 
CT terminal, the Monon, the CNI, the LNN, Atlantic Coastline, and Seaboard Coastline. And I may have left out one or two, but there, at the end of the day, there was 13 individual agreements that come together on CSX Railroad, or, or 13 individual railroads that came together uh, on CSX Railroad. Uh, through the process, and, and by the way, at this, this same kind of timeline, all the other big four were forming, the Burlington Northern, Santa Fe, uh, UP, and, and Norfolk Southern were kind of doing the same thing, buying and merging and, and putting railroads together. But I'm going to talk about my experience on CSX. So dur through that process on CSX, we were fortunate enough to, to come together as a group of uh, systems and write one single collective bargaining agreement that was better for all of us. It, it far exceeded uh, in, in work rules and pay uh, the benefits of any of the single agreements that we had, the, the LNN, the, the, the CNO, the BNO, the Seaboard, uh, any of those. While they were all good agreements, and I can tell you in my view, any agreement under the Railway Labor Act is a good agreement, uh, just some have nuances that may make them a little better in one place or a little weaker in another place, but uh, having an agreement, a collective bargaining agreement is much better than not having a union in a collective bargaining agreement. So we were fortunate enough to, to come out of that process with a single agreement. Uh, through our own internal problems, we were never able to get all the CSX federations uh, under one single union. We, we did do enough mergers to come up with probably well, there's 90% of the CSX members in the Allied Federation and, and then the other 10% are split between two or three other smaller groups and other federations. And, and that's existed along the way. Uh, for my entire career, I have promoted unity within the rail industry and unity within railroads, uh, members working on the same railroad. And I've fought hard and was part of getting most of CSX members under one, one umbrella with a single agreement. It's uh, far past time to, to put these uh, railroad members under one uh, federation where they can all pull the same direction, have the same dues, uh, de deliberate and talk about and address the issues on the entire railroad, not just issues on a third of it or half of it or part of it, uh, and they can all pull the same direction. So th that's why we're at the point of me trying, well, not trying, uh, with my authority under Article 19 of the, of the BMW bylaws that that uh, give authority to the president of the, of the union to establish joint protective boards on a single carrier when they've reached the level of organization that warrants that. We are at that point on all these railroads. Uh, I'm. Uh, exercising that authority under the bylaws and, and that particular language in the bylaws has been there for decades. It preceded me uh, and I've been around for 45 years. Actually the same language was ratified when we merged with the Teamsters in 2004 by a membership referendum that, that went in the mail and every member voted on that bylaw language. It's been there forever. Um, everyone in this union knows that I've claim the authority or, or I've, I've, I've expressed the authority on Article 19 to do what I'm, what I'm doing uh, this year. And uh, it's never been challenged as far as that authority. We've had co multiple conventions since 2004 and, and the language is still there. So there's no question the authority exists. Uh, there's no question that our members will be better served if, they, if all members on a single railroad uh, are under a single Federation or Joint Protective Board uh, pulling uh, the weight the same way. What will not change with any uh, of these uh, Joint Protective Boards, seniority will not change, your agreement will not change, local lodge will not change, your dues will not be raised. In fact, if you look at it logically where some of these railroad groups have multiple federations on one railroad, you have uh, full-time offices, uh, you have three general chairpersons, you have multiple officers and, and overlap of all these system federations. Uh, logically, if the delegates that assemble 
at these conventions choose to establish a structure that that reduces the, the dues, they're very they're welcome to do that. And and I can see uh, where dues may decrease, but I don't, you know, I, I'm not raising that issue to to suggest anybody should lower the dues. I, I can tell you that, I've, and it's been public for me for years, that maintenance away dues are high enough. Uh, I, I think our dues structure supports an inflated structure that's too old and and outdated and needs to be changed, and that's part of the reason I'm doing all this stuff. Um, some folks have asked, uh, why now? Well, I can tell you, I just told you my career has been focused on getting uh, unity among our members on railroads, unity on our, among our members within the rail unions across the board. I have no authority. Uh, authority or control to put railroad unions together, but I do have authority to, to try to bring unity to the, the railroads that we represent among our members, and, it, and that's what I'm doing. It's, uh, it's something that didn't come up yesterday. It's, it's not new. Uh, it's, it's something that should have been done years ago, and, and a lot of folks have said, you should have done it years ago. Well, I, I maybe should have, but for my career, I've tried to I've tried to work with majorities and tried to work in a democratic process in a way that didn't put people in a, in a worse place than what they are today. Uh, we've had a lot of retirements, a lot of people leave the brotherhood. I, I actually started this process a few years back on, on Chicago, in, in, on the Metro, and, and at that time uh, I committed to the National Vision officers I work with. If, if a majority of them wanted me to stop, I would. And at, at that time, a majority by one said, no, we'd rather you not put the Federation together today. So I, I backed away and didn't. Uh, I can tell you today, uh, a majority of the National Division officers support uh, the activity that we're going through here. And, and many of them will chair these conventions and, and uh, think it's the right thing to do. So uh, there, there's no reason not to do it. The, the, the reason to do it now is, uh, whether you know or not, this is my last term as president of the BMW. It'll be my last term as any union officer. Uh, I'll certainly stay around, uh, hopefully, and if one someone asks for advice, I'd be happy to share. Uh, but I will not be running for office in 2022. Uh, and if I don't do that, I don't think there's anyone in this brotherhood following me that, that would take the job and have the political will, the ability, and desire to do what needs to be done. So uh, I will get it done this year. And hopefully uh, folks finally accept it and, and we move on to a, a better union, a more unified union, and a union that's working together to make sure that every member on every railroad is served to its fullest capacity. The last thing I'd like to say today is uh, I hope all of you have taken the opportunity to get the COVID shot, if not for yourself, uh, for your brother, for your neighbor, because we are our brother's keeper, and this thing is starting to raise its head again, and I certainly hope that uh, we don't go into back into a lockdown situation like we've had for the last year. It's It's been traumatic on all of us, and, and we should all do our part to help society get by this, just like we did, the, our former citizens did uh, with polio and other vaccine-related illnesses. It's the only way to get by COVID, uh, and, and I hopefully uh, encourage you members to get, get your shots and, and do the right thing. That's it. I hope you have a great day and uh, look forward to seeing you in the near future.